it's been pretty accurately debunked that the writing that was in Josephus's work about Jesus existing was completely fabricated by uh, religious figures at the time. Okay, well, first of all, that's not true. Uh, but that is true. No, <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. I mean, it's we, not we, can, true. we can we can disagree, but okay, okay. I. Uh, there is there's one truth. So. First of all, the only way you can tell if somebody is misquoting something is if you know what the actual quote was, right? So what should Josephus have said? Welcome back to the channel, folks. This video features a Q&A between a student named Matthew and Dr. Frank Turek. And this particular line of questioning, it almost feels like a court case as Matthew asks a series of questions to Dr. Turek. But at the end of this video, I'm gonna basically highlight what is the question beneath the question and why I think some of these small things that are in dispute related to the Bible and related to the actual autographs themselves and are the names that are on the Gospels actually the author of the Gospel. You'll understand what I mean in a second here, but then I'll give you guys some of my conclusory thoughts at the end. With that being said, let's dive into the video. Uh, would you agree the Bible is written by men? Oh, sure. Yeah, yes. it's written by men. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, this is something that I can struggle with, but I, I study linguistics and I do a lot of stuff with languages and uh, to my knowledge and I think to a lot of uh, biblical scholars, but I can't, I can't name me off the top of the head because it's something I just recently were, was reading, but uh, ancient, it was like some, some form of like ancient Greek was the original version of language that the New Testament was written in. Is that what you believe as well? Jesus probably spoke either Aramaic or Hebrew and it was written in Koine Greek, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, so, to, how do we believe, or how do you believe, rather, might be a better question, the Bible was written originally? Like, uh, so, do you believe, up there it says, opponents admitted Gospels written by disciples, are you saying written, like the Gospels according to Mark were written by Mark, or are you saying that just disciples is in somebody that follows, like, the teachings of the Bible or something like that? The, who, who wrote the Gospels is the question, or? Yeah, uh, well, uh, just addressing the one point, saying the opponents admitted Gospels written by disciples, so I was just wanting to clarification. Okay, yes, well... As far as we know, the writers of the New Testament, there's eight or nine writers dependent upon who wrote Hebrews. Most of them bear the name of the person, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, except, you know, the, the letters of the Apostle Paul, there's about 13 of them. And then there's other letters written by Peter, people like Peter, Jude. Um, so, so clarification, you believe James. Gospels according to Mark was written by Mark? Yes. Okay. Uh, the same exact disciples, like, written in the, the Bible. So Mark, in the Bible, wrote... Gospels according to Mark. Yes? He wrote the Gospel according to Mark. Okay. That's what the earliest evidence shows, yes. Well, now, I, I, he was probably getting his information mostly from Peter. That's the thought there. Well, I would say that most of the evidence points to that being completely false because the people at this time and Mark, the position that he was in socioeconomically, had no knowledge of Greek at all. Oh, no, sure and they did. I, I disagree. I think most historians would disagree with that, and I think most biblical scholars admit that Mark did not write the Gospels according to Mark. You just attest to it. Uh, well, wait, 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 are you saying Koine Greek did not exist in the no, first no, century? No, 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 no. I'm saying that most people spoke Aramaic at that time. Most people also did not speak Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. That was mostly attested to religious figures. And as fishermen and as these followers of Jesus, they were not in the church. They were not wealthy. They did not have high socio socioeconomic standing that is associated. Let me just say really quick here that Koine Greek literally means common Greek. It wasn't only used by people of a high socioeconomic background, but by everybody. That's actually the meaning of that word. So just not that that clears up everything here, but let's just put that on the table. With knowing ancient Hebrew or ancient Greek. Well, so, uh, what you're doing, though, is you're taking aggregate data, Matthew, and you're applying it to individuals. And you can't do that. Oh, you can go the other way. Sorry, can, why not? Be, it would be like saying that... I mean, we look at statistics, we look at evidence, and we say, to our best of the knowledge, people of his socioeconomic right. standing did not have the knowledge of this language to be able to write the Gospels according to Mark in point A Hebrew. What, what you can't do is, like, like suppose you say that the average, just I'm making something up, the average income in um, uh, Fairfax, Virginia, is $100,000 a year per household. And uh, that's the average. You can say, okay, that's the average, but you can't point at one person in here and say, you're making $100,000. You can't take aggregate data and apply it to individuals, just like you can't take the aggregate 
of the knowledge of the first century and apply it to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John because you don't know if they were a, a special case. Yeah, that I, I, but that's exactly my point is that we don't know specifically. And so when you don't know specifics, you go by aggregate data because that's what the closest average person is. But if you have testimony from reliable people that says they did write it, just I, like if I, I had testimony from reliable people that said that that man did make a hundred thousand dollars, then I would say he or two hundred or whatever it was. Then I would go with that rather than a trying to apply the aggregate data to the individual. Sure, but uh, where do we see any evidence or statements that are reliable saying that Mark is able to speak and write exquisite point A? He, uh, the early church fathers widely attested the gospel writers to the names that we have now. And there is no other data from that time period which suggests any other authors. Sorry, but uh, the religious figures at that time are very notorious for fa completely fabricating information or records about uh, religion. Matthew, and, you are again taking aggregate data yes, and, and that's, applying well, that's it to what I'm individuals. Saying. What? And I'm saying that because we have no knowledge of these specific people at that time, we have to go by the best possible information. No, we, we do know. have knowledge. We have people writing and attesting about it. Uh, Yet yeah, you're saying religious figures who again are notorious for going back into the period of time that Jesus existed where the records were right, let, contemporaneous. Let me, Matthew, let me, let me ask you a question. Sure. What would the writers of the New Testament, what motivation would these people have to invent all this? Uh, I don't claim to know any motivation. Okay, so then why are you applying nefarious motives to these people that you don't even know. Are you talking about, no, no, I'm talking about two separate people. You're saying that we have writings from religious figures who in that same vein fabricated evidence such as, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the exact guy's name, but there was a really famous, I think it was like Josephus, Josephus who was a very famous uh, Roman historian. Josephus. Josephus, Josephus, sorry. It is funny that he kind of begins with, I'm a linguist. And then just a few minutes later, he's mispronouncing Josephus and calling him a, a Roman historian rather than a Jewish historian. Again, anybody can get facts wrong. I'm not trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. But I think, anyways, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I, pronunciation's wrong. I, I, okay. I wasn't sure the exact pronunciation, but he's very famous for being very... Uh, uh, what's the word, strict in writing about historical figures, especially religious messiah figures at the time. And it's been pretty accurately debunked that the writing that was in Josephus's work about Jesus existing was completely fabricated by uh, religious figures at the time. Okay, well, first of all, that's not true. Uh, but that is true. No, <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, I mean, we, we, can, we, can, we can disagree, but okay, okay. I, uh, there is there's one truth. So. First of all, the only way you can tell if somebody is misquoting something is if you know what the actual quote was right so what should Josephus have said rather than you're, you're you're talking about the famous passage in Josephus now scholars do agree that Christians altered some of what he said but we have an Arabic version that appears unaltered and it still talks about Jesus, and he's all, it, Josephus also talks about Jesus when he, when he talks about the death of Jesus' brother James. But I don't know what that has to do with Mark writing Mark. Let's just say you're right. Let's just say we don't know who wrote the Gospels. So? Does that, does that mean that what was written in the Gospels is false? No, I'm not saying that. I was just saying that it shows that there... Uh, trying to put this in a more elegant situation, but uh, to attest that the writers were there at the time and that these specific biblical figures lends truth, if you believe in that, to the authenticity of the Bible, and I'm just saying that that does not seem to be the case. Okay. I'm saying you use that as further proof, once you already believe, of evidence of, oh, look, Mark was there, Mark wrote the Bible, this has to be true, or this is more likely to be true. Okay, look, yeah, we, we know documents and sources were written very early. I didn't have time to go through it here. Yeah. Even Bart Ehrman, the great skeptic from UNC Chapel Hill, admits Paul writes 1 Corinthians in 55 AD. And an ancient creed that talks about Jesus dying and rising from the dead and everybody that he appeared to comes all the way from the 30s AD. It can't be legendary. That creed is put in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 8. This is very early stuff. It cannot be legendary. Now the question is, how do you interpret the data, not what is the data? People 
Atheists, Christians, everyone between agree on the data. The question is, how do you interpret it? Do you say Jesus rose from the dead or not? You know, Bart Ehrman, the great skeptic at UNC Chapel Hill, will not take a position on an alternative explanation for the resurrection because he knows that every position he tries to take has holes in it that can't support the weight of the evidence. So the real question is, did Jesus rise from the dead? I think that this kid is, is a smart kid, and I think that he has basically come across some information from critics or from skeptics getting into, you know, which gospel is actually written by the person whose name is on it. And this whole, this whole conversation, there is some dispute within scholarship, to be fair, but at the end of the conversation is where I think this gets really important. And it's that basically some of that criticism that he has apparently been exposed to coming into this Q&A has led him to a totally illogical conclusion about God. And what I mean by that is this. He's basically saying that he accepts at a, at a basic premise that there is a God. He's even, he even seems open to, to Jesus, and he, he's not pushing back against some of, some of these things, but he's basically saying, but the Bible was written by people, so how do we know that the message that's inside of the Bible is, in fact, reliable? And my response to that would be how completely absurd it would be for a God capable of creation— and willing to restore humanity through his death, burial, and resurrection. How completely absurd would it be for that God to allow the story and the message and the truth of what he's done for us to be lost in history? Do you really think that God is not capable of, of keeping intact what he wanted to communicate to us across history? Is, is God really not capable of preserving for us the vital information and message that we need, even in the year 2024, that seems to be the student's argument, that, that, that God would allow human error, basically, to prevent the message of what he's done for us to be lost. And to me, that's just, that's completely absurd, because it basically undermines the ability for God to work alongside of people while still preserving the message of what he's done for people. And to me, that's clearly what is the case, is there are, you know, there are small typographical and grammatical errors in some of the manuscripts. And there is basically a lot of human error inside of the manuscripts. But even as Dr. Turek was mentioning here, Bart Ehrman, one of the most well-known skeptics, admits that not a single doctrine is affected by any of these little typographical and grammatical errors by scribes. And I have a whole other video, by the way, that goes into that process uh, that is used to understand and to look at all of the different manuscripts that we have, 5,000 plus Greek manuscripts, over 20,000 manuscripts, including all languages. What process is used to look at all of them, each with its own error, to determine what the original, called the autograph, entailed? And if you guys are interested in that, I'll put that video right here that you can do a deep dive into that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider joining the Wisdom Society. Support the mission. Invest in yourself. Join the community.